Good morning. Today is the 8th of June, and we begin our worship this morning with our opening sentence from Psalm 19, verse 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there is no help in us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent according to your promises, declared to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord, and grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great king above all gods. In his hand are all the depths of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. O come, let us adore him. Psalm 92. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord, and to sing praises unto your name, O Most High, to tell of your loving kindness early in the morning, and of your faithfulness in the night season, upon an instrument of ten strings, and upon the lute, with the sound of melody upon the harp. For you, Lord, have made me glad by your deeds, and I will shout for joy because of your handiwork. O Lord, how glorious are your works! Your thoughts are very deep. The dull of heart does not consider this, and the fool does not understand it. Though the ungodly are as green as the grass, and though all the workers of wickedness flourish, they shall be destroyed forever. For you, Lord, are the Most High forevermore. For lo, your enemies, Lord, lo, your enemies shall perish, and all the workers of wickedness shall be destroyed. But my horn shall be exalted like the horns of wild bulls, for I am anointed with fresh oil. My eyes also shall see its desire upon my enemies, and my ear shall hear with joy the end of the wicked who rise up against me. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree, and shall spread abroad like a cedar in Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They also shall bring forth fruit in their old age, and shall be green and full of sap. They that, may sh that they may show how upright the Lord is, my rock, in whom there is no unrighteousness. Psalm 93 The Lord is King, and has put on glorious apparel. The Lord has put on his apparel, and girded himself with strength. 
He has made the round world so sure that it cannot be moved. Ever since the world began, your throne has been established. You are from everlasting. The floods have risen, O Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods have lifted up their waves. Mightier than the sound of many waters, mightier than the waves of the sea, the Lord who dwells on high is mightier. Your testimonies, O Lord, are very sure. Holiness adorns your house forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our lesson today comes from Joshua chapter 6, and it recalls at the beginning the fall of Jericho. Now Jericho was shut up inside and outside because of the people of Israel. None went out, and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand, and its king and mighty men of valor. You shall march around the city, all the men of war going around the city once. Thus you, you shall do for six days. Seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. On the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times, and the priests shall blow the trumpets. And when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, when you hear the sound of the trumpet, then all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city will fall down flat, and the people shall go up, every one straight before. So Joshua the son of Nun called the priests and said to them, Take up the ark of the covenant, and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord. And he said to the people, Go forward, march around the city, and let the armed men pass on before the ark of the Lord. And just as Joshua had commanded the people, the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns, before the Lord went forward, blowing the trumpets, with the ark of the covenant of the Lord following them. The armed men were walking before the priests who were blowing the trumpets, and the rear guard was walking after the ark, while the trumpet blew continually. But Joshua commanded the people, You shall not shout or make your voice heard, neither shall any word go out of your mouth, until the day I tell you to shout. Then you shall shout. So he caused the ark of the Lord to circle the city, going about it once. And there came into the camp and spent the night in the camp. And Joshua rose early in the morning, and the priests took up the ark of the Lord, and the seven priests, bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord, walked on, and they blew the trumpets continually. And the armed men were walking before them, and the rear guard was walking after the ark of the Lord, while the trumpets blew continually. And the second day they marched around the city once, and returned to the camp. So they did for six days. On the seventh day they rose early, at the dawn of day, and marched around the city in the same manner seven times. It was only on that day that they marched around the city seven times. And at the seventh time, when the priest had blown the trumpets, Joshua said to the people, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. And the city and all that is within it shall be devoted to the Lord for destruction. Only Rahab, the prostitute, and all who are with her in her house shall live, because she hid the messengers whom we sent. But you keep yourselves from the things devoted to destruction, lest when you have devoted them, you take any of the devoted things and make the camp of Israel a thing of destruction and bring trouble upon it. But all silver and gold and every vessel of bronze and iron are holy to the Lord, they shall go into the treasury of the Lord. So the people shouted, and the trumpets were blown. As soon as the people heard the sound of the trumpet, the people shouted a great shout, and the wall fell down flat, so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they captured the city. When they devoted all the city to destruction, then they devoted all the city to destruction, both men and women, young and old, oxen, sheep, and donkeys, with the edge of the sword. But the two men who had spied out the land, Joshua said, Go into the prostitute's house and bring out from there the woman and all who belong to her, as you swore to her. 
So the young men who had been spies went in and brought out Rahab and her father and mother and brothers and all who belonged to her. And they brought all her relatives and put them outside the camp of Israel. And they burned the city with fire and everything in it, only the gold and silver and gold and the vessels of bronze and of iron they put into the treasury of the house of the Lord. But Rahab the prostitute in her father's household, and all who belonged to her, Joshua saved alive. And she has lived in Israel to this day, because she hid the messages from Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. Joshua laid an oath on them at that time, saying, Cursed before the Lord be the man who rises up and rebuilds this city, Jericho. At the cost of his firstborn shall he lay its foundation, and at the cost of his youngest son shall he set up its gates. So the Lord was with Joshua, and his frame, fame was in all the land. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple. On the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you beholding the depths and the high vault of heaven, glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Our second lesson is taken from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 21, verses 5 through 38. And while some were speaking of the temple, how it was adorned with noble stones and offerings, Jesus said, As for these things that you see, the days will come when there will not be be left here one stone upon another that will not have been thrown down. And they asked him, Teacher, when will these things be, and what will be the sign when these things are about to take place? And Jesus said, See that you are not led astray. I am he, and the time is at hand. Do not go after them. And when you hear of wars and tumults, do not be terrified, for these things must take place, but the end will not be at once. Then Jesus said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, and in various places famines and pestilences. And there will be terrors and great signs from heaven. But before all this they will lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors for my name's sake, and will be, this will be your opportunity to bear witness. Settle it beforehand in your minds. Do not, uh, in your minds, not to meditate beforehand how to answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which none of your adversaries will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be delivered up even by parents and brothers and relatives and friends, and some of you they will put to death. You will be hated by all for my name's sake, but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance you will gain your lives. But when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then know that its desolation has come near. Then let those who are in Judah, Judea flee to the mountains, and let those who are inside the city depart, and let not those who are out of the country enter it. For these are days of vengeance to fulfill what is written. Alas, for women who are pregnant and for those who are nursing infants in those days, for there will be great distress upon the earth and wrath against this people. They will fall by the edge of the sword and be led captive among all nations and Jerusalem will be trampled underfoot by the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles are fulfilled and there will be signs in the sun and moon and stars and on the earth distress of nations in perplexity because of the roaring of the sea and the waves 
people fainting with fear and with foreboding of what is coming on the world. For the powers of heaven, of the heavens, will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things take, begin to take place, straighten up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. And Jesus told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they come in leaf, you see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. Also, so also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all has taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But watch yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the cares of this life, and that the day come upon you suddenly like a trap. For it will, be, it will come upon all who dwell on the face of the earth. But stay awake at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that are going to take place and stand before the Son of Man. And every day he was teaching in the temple, but at night... Jesus went out and lodged on the mount called Olivet. And early in the morning, and all the people came to him in the temple to hear him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain, for with your blood you have redeemed for God, from every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God, and so to him who sits upon the throne, and to Christ the Lamb be worship and praise, dominion and splendor for ever and for ever more. Please join with me in prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, come and fill us with your presence. Strengthen our walk, our, witment, our witness, and our commitment to Jesus as our Savior and Lord, and draw us always closer to the Father, so that as we are his children, adopted through Christ, we may not only receive and bear the blessings of being children of the King, but may share those blessings with others. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. In the Old Testament reading today, we hear, we read, the fall of the city of Jericho, that great oasis. Uh, the Israelites passed through um, and I want you to kind of make this connection. They passed through the first generation, passed through the Red Sea upon dry ground. And then the second generation, the one that's going to actually enter the promised land because their forefathers lacked faith in God, this second generation crosses the, the Jordan River on dry ground with the water parted and standing on one side so that they can enter. And as they enter, it appears, and as the geography lays out, uh, there's the city of Jericho before them, an oasis. And it's a walled city at that time. And we've been reading about the accounts of the spies sent into the land and to the city and Rahab and the promises she made by sparing the lives of those spies and the promises they made. And here in our lesson today, uh, the promises are kept. And so Rahab and all who are dwelling with her, her mother, her father, her brothers, her family, their lives are spared and they live, are taken out to live amongst the people of Israel, God's chosen ones. And as we see, the city is destroyed and the people are condemned and God um, punishes them. Their judgment day, if you will, has come. Keep that in mind especially the, the way that Jericho fell. Uh, those who like Christianity but are always seeking to find a rational reason, rationale 
uh, for the miracles are, are, you know, tend to be challenged by things like this. How do the waters of the Red Sea, how are they parted? How are the waters of the Jordan stood still so that, again, not only did they part, the, <coughs> excuse me, and not only uh, are they held up, but the Israelites passed not through muddy, not through silt, but on dry land, dry ground to the other side. How is it that a great military victory is accomplished without anything but walking around in circles and circling it, blowing trumpets, and then finally shouting? And the walls of Jericho fall to the ground from a shout. M many uh, archaeologists and the like have uh, you know, have checked out the walls of Jericho and they see that they've fallen at times and they've been rebuilt and they've fallen at times and they've been rebuilt and there's evidence of fire. There's evidence of the human warfare. Jericho is a very old city and it exists today. So here's the thing. When we try to explain through the might of man our armies, our might, what we did. And, that, and that's fine. God uses us, okay? But here's the thing. The fall of Jericho was a miraculous event, just like all the miracles of God. There is really no human explanation. Walls don't just fall down. And, you know, you can hear some silly things. Well, the vibration of all those people weakened the walls. And then when they shouted, that was just, come on, guys. These are real walls. These are, these are not paper-thin walls. This is a miracle. And that's the whole point. God delivered Jericho into the hands of his people. Now, sadly, fast forward to um, uh, the gospel today, and sadly, we see that Jerusalem, like Jericho was, will be besieged. But unlike the fall of Jericho, which was God acting and performing that uh, through his miracles. The, the people just were asked to follow and, and obey and do what he, what he commanded. But it, Jerusalem in 70 AD was laid siege by the Romans. And they did it the, if you will, the old-fashioned human way. And they laid siege and they starved the city and eventually they were able to breach the walls and the gates and come in and slaughter the people there. And literally, as Jesus had predicted, nothing of the temple is, is left standing. Only, only, if you will, the supporting walls of the Temple Mount, what today we call <clears throat> the Western Wall, or some call the, we the Wailing Wall. Now that being said, there's also the other walls <clears throat> of the Temple Mount on the other side, which is where the Golden Gate still remains. But the temple itself, gone, and in its place today is the shrine, um, uh, the uh, Muslim Islamic shrine, the Dome of the Rock, which is not the temple. <clears throat> so two things in Jesus' prophecy, he talks about the time coming for the destruction of Jerusalem. He's also talking about end times. And, and you see that, you know, there's one generation that will not pass away. But then he expands the teaching so that, as is often the case, um, there's the end times when the Son of Man will come again uh, as, as uh, you know, we, we, we are expecting. He hasn't returned yet in that sense. Yes, he's been resurrected. Yes, he came for the resurrection. But if we're looking for the second coming, that's what we're still anticipating and looking forward to. Uh, and in the meantime, and this is... The thing you've heard me sort of talk about this before. In the meantime, let us not spend time trying to predict when he's coming. As if that will make any difference. As if we can force him to come or if we can delay him to come. And then what good is that knowledge if it's not put to life application? And the truth of the matter is, when Jesus is asked about this, he says nobody knows. It will be when God says it will be. It will be God's kairos time. So it's frustrating to hear people constantly talking about, well, that earthquake or this latest thing or this pandemic, Jesus is coming. Well, of course he's coming, but we don't know when. And here is the point. Look at verse 34. Jesus says, but watch yourselves. 
lest your hearts be weighed down with dissipation. What's dissipation? It's basically going after material things. Doing uh, dis dissipation is um, doing um, overindulgence, uh, sensual ple pleasures, um, living in, in, a, in a sense of just doing whatever makes you happy. Don't be weighed down by that or drunkenness or the cares of the life. Because when Jesus comes, and it will be sudden, you don't want to be caught sleeping. There are other parables he tells about this that we're aware of, right? And so <clears throat> he says, stay awake at all times. He's, he's not commanding us not to have sleep. <laughs> he's talking about spiritual awakeness, spiritual awareness. Stay awake, praying that you may have strength to escape. Praying that when Jesus comes again, when troubles fall, that he will deliver us. So there's a double teaching in all of this. But the bottom line is, and you've heard me say this before, it's the sort of Boy Scout motto, be prepared. And then we have nothing to fear. In fact, we should look forward to Jesus' return, but not dwell on it so much that we forget that there's work of the kingdom be, to be done now by us. One is the invitation for everyone to come to Jesus as their Savior and Lord. And there are various ways of doing that. One is just the frank, honest statement. You know, come and see. Come and check out Jesus. Let me share what he's done for me. There's that personal witness. But there's also the, the good works that reveal the kingdom life. And someone says, why do you do that? Because... Everything I have is a gift from God. Because I've received the grace and love of Jesus Christ, I pass it on. You see, the good deeds we do, we do to the credit of God and to the credit of Christ. And it needs to be by the, to the credit of Christ. Because otherwise, remember we've talked about this, God is too vague of a term. There are many gods and many people who claim to worship God. And that's great for them, you know, as far as that goes. But the God that we worship, again, Trinity Sunday, the God we worship is one God and three persons. And salvation comes only through the second person. We have to accept Jesus as our Savior and Lord. There is no other way to the Father but through the Son. So to deny the Son is to deny the Father, and therefore to cut oneself off from salvation. And the other religions will, you know, talk about karma and things coming back to get you and to bite you for your behavior. Okay, what's that? We, we're dull people. That just means that we have the spiraling cycle of, of, of messing up and, and being punished for it. Or the one of God is an angry, wrathful God and he expects things out of us that we cannot bear. And uh, so we better try to figure out some way to make him happy. That's not, that's not Christianity. Christianity is that God is... Quite frankly, God loves us even while we're sinners. He sent his son, Jesus, to die on the cross to save us. The gift of salvation, the gift of daughter of the king and son of the king is given as faith in Jesus. We don't earn it. It's a gift. And once we receive the gift, we open it and then we share it. It's like sending a whole bunch of chocolate to somebody. And, and when they, you know, you can get the, the box of chocolate, but if you never open it, you've gotten it, but you're not enjoy it, enjoying it. But if you open it, and there's too much for one person, you share it. And then you have fellowship, and you have thanks, and you give credit to the one who sent you the gift. And in this case, I'm using the illustration for God sending his beloved son. So you see, Christianity is unique because God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. There is no other. He will have no other gods but him. And so this is not a little secret for us. Christianity has been described as one beggar, a starving person. One beggar telling the other beggars, there's food over there. And it never gives out. And there's no charge. There's no financial charge. There's no sexual favors that have to be paid. There's no cost. Except the cost of coming and receiving. And then we're told to go share it. This nudes with others. And you know, to this day, there's a code amongst the homeless people. 
and they will they will put signs little symbols and so forth that says these people are kind they'll help us these people are abusive stay away what if the beggars judge us for Christ you see what I'm saying don't get confused with Christology Jesus comes again but I'm just simply saying in our life application what if the people we meet judge us their witnesses called now here's the thing we believe in Christ we're saved we don't need to fear judgment day but what if you know our, our, our lives our witnesses is our witness in a sense our words count they absolutely do they're necessary but it goes together and faith is the same way if you believe in Jesus as your Savior and Lord you're gonna act like it and that's gonna be very different than the world wonderful teachings today I've only scratched the surface go back and read the gospel there's a lot in it let's continue now with the Apostles Creed I believe in God the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth I believe in Jesus Christ his only son our Lord he was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary he suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified died and was buried he descended to the dead on the third day he rose again he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father he will come again to judge the living and the dead I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church the communion of Saints the forgiveness of sins the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting Amen the Lord be with you and with your spirit let us pray Lord have mercy upon us Christ have mercy upon us Lord have mercy upon us our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen O Lord show your mercy upon us and grant us your salvation O Lord guide those who govern us and lead us in the way of justice and truth clothe your ministers with righteousness and let your people sing with joy O Lord save your people and bless your inheritance give peace in our time O Lord and defend us by your mighty power let not the needy O Lord be forgotten nor the hope of the poor be taken away create in us clean hearts O God and take not your Holy Spirit from us our colic of the day which comes from the previous Sunday and in this case it's the the second Sunday after Pentecost and uh, and also proper five if you're looking for that in the prayer book um, the seasons after Pentecost after Trinity are broken down into pro what's the, the weeks are broken down in what's called propers and so we're in proper five grant O Lord that the course of this world may be so peaceably ordered by your providence that your church may joyfully serve you in quiet confidence and godly peace through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever Amen today we also commemorate Thomas Kinn who was Bishop of Bath and Wells that's in England he was a non juror 11 excuse me 1711 <clears throat> that means he did not sign the oath um, of allegiance and therefore uh, he lost his uh, his seat O God our Heavenly Father 
you raised up your faithful servant Thomas Ken to be a bishop and pastor in your church and to feed your flock. Give abundantly to all pastors the gifts of your Holy Spirit that they may minister in your household as true servants of Christ and stewards of your divine mysteries. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is Oops, excuse me, I've done something here. Sorry, <laughs> clicked on the wrong button. O oh God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you as eternal life and to serve you as perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who alone works great marvels, send down upon our clergy and the congregations committed to their charge the life-giving spirit of your grace. Shower them with the continual dew of your blessing and ignite in them a zealous love of your gospel through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time I invite your prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings as the Holy Spirit places upon your heart and your mind. And I remind you of that symbol of concentric circles uh, where we pray for ourselves and we extend that to pray for our families. And then we extend that to pray for our church and our church family and all of this, the community and to the world, to missionaries who go out for the mission of the church. You get the gist. Uh, pray uh, also specifically, I'd ask your prayers for Adriana today uh, for um, for Joy, uh, for her surgery to be scheduled, uh, for um, Glenn as he continues the radiation treatments, and for all um, who are on our parish prayer lists and uh, in our hearts and prayers. So let us pray, my friends. Please join with me now in the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies, that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you promise through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will grant their requests. Fulfill now, Lord, our desires and petitions, as may be best for us, granting, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. My friends, I wish you a wonderful and blessed day. You are blessed by God. Please bless others in his name. 
and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow as we gather again for daily morning prayer. Have a blessed day and uh, see you tomorrow.